first and foremost before we get into this episode of questions from subs i gotta give a shout out to the newest team keep it clean patron my guy trail from louisville and before we get into his question one more update that i saw youtube did now in the comments section we can reply to comments with youtube shorts oh yeah we gonna be on that so but better have your notifications turned on for your comments just in case you end up being a part of a short. Anyway, first question came from my boy Trail and appreciate you for being a, a patron. Now, real quick, anybody that wants to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, if you want to, fine. If you don't want to, please, please never feel bad. Don't feel bad. Uh, but if you want to, you can go to TeamKeepItClean. Uh, not TeamKeepItClean.com. You can go to Patreon.com slash EngravenVids. If you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. Let's get into this question. He said, what's up, bro? I just want to say I appreciate the content as a true Ravens fan. I appreciate you even watching it. Thank you. Because, again, th thank you to y'all that watch because y'all don't have to watch, but y'all do. Y'all show love and y'all show support. So thank you all for that because I seriously appreciate it. He said, Lamar Jackson had a lot of success at Louisville with kind of unproven receivers. Uh, Travion Samuel, Jalen Smith, and a clutch tight end, and Cole uh, Heikerton, also Louisville's own Reggie Bonifon, who was converted into a receiver from QB. This whole Ravens team looks like that same Louisville team as far as receivers being unproven, but the teams were still winning lots of games with high scores on the board and would have been the same with the running back depth, but there were lots of injuries last year, of course. But I feel as if the Ravens will make a good playoff run from this offense guaranteed. And honestly, a possible Super Bowl run. It seems like everyone on this team is unproven. But regardless if the Ravens didn't make any more moves, we will be good. Our receivers are not that small. But we are expecting them to be Julio Jones or DK or even Odell, who's not even playing this year, possibly. I just want your take on that. All right, so the unproven receivers. And... and Y'all know this is, I, I never get tired of talking about the receivers when it comes to the Ravens. I, I, I love it. I could talk about it all day, every day. Um, yeah, they, they are unproven. Uh, can they make a Super Bowl run? You, you, you said uh, they can make a good playoff run. And honestly, a possible Super Bowl run. I mean, anything's possible until it ain't possible no more. Um, but yeah, they are unproven. But uh, like we talked about before in the previous video, uh, with these guys, this could be this could this is a big opportunity they got right here. It's a huge opportunity. Um, they could shut a lot of people up. Rashad Bateman, um, we've seen a lot of what he's capable of. We've seen little bits, and we haven't even seen a full Rashad Bateman. We just seen a, li a little bit of him, but it seems like we've seen a lot more of Rashad Bateman of what he can do more than what a Proche. Or a Duvernay can do. And I don't really put Wallace on that list. I mean, technically he is, but he got drafted right with Bateman too. And he was like way behind on the depth chart because obviously we had still had Hollywood, still had Miles Boykin and whatnot. But the thing with me, um, the thing where I'm a little concerned is because I know everybody's saying, hey, let the young guys play. Yeah, let the young guys play. Again, it's not our decision. We're not the coaches. Co coaches make the decisions. But why didn't we see, especially when Sammy Watkins, he got hurt. Uh, Rashad Bateman, he was hurt. And, and they, they obviously got hurt at different times. Um, and with Miles Boykin, you know, like Ravens, it just it just never clicked uh, with him and the Ravens. But why didn't we see more of these guys, like even last season, like that? Like Devin DuVernay, he's been out there a lot, but mostly on jet sweeps. As a receiver, he don't really get used as a receiver too much. James Prochet, he was active for a while, but then he started moving to inactive later in the season. But why didn't the coaching staff play him more back then? Why didn't they play Duvernay more back then? I feel like a lot of Ravens fans, they, they get upset when we talk about it, but they don't think about what the coaching staff uh, has done and what they haven't done as well uh, with these receivers. Now, I'm hoping that now, hey, all right, Sammy Watkins gone. Oh, cool, cool, cool. And it seemed like, I mean, he was gone for like most of last year anyway. Um, Boykin is gone. And and Boykin, he just, he never got to really have much of an impact on his offense as a receiver anyway. So why couldn't those guys leapfrog him 
Is it just cause, is it just because of his blocking? Because his blocking was that good to where somebody who uh, a lot of people look at as, as a better receiver couldn't jump Miles Boykin on a depth chart. If all he was good for was blocking, like so many people say, why weren't a James Prochet or Devin Duvin? Why weren't they ahead of him like that? Why weren't they more involved? Like well, Devin Duvin they was, but like a Prochet. It's just something to think about. Um, but Boykin is gone. Watkins is gone. Hollywood is gone. So they got a shot. They got a shot. Um, and training camp, Bateman been looking good. I know he been hurt. Well, as of this recording, he he been out the last couple of days. This is Saturday, August 6th at 7, 7.09 p.m. Um, Devin DuVernay, you know, I, I, I've, I've been hearing a little bit more about him every now and then. But we've been hearing a lot about Prochet. We've been. We've been hearing a whole lot about Prochet. Now, um, I just hope that this isn't one of those Ravens training camp hype type of things. Now, I ain't mad at him getting training camp hype because it's better than him not getting it. Uh, but I just hope it continues and it translates to games. I hope it's not just, oh, he's having all this success in training camp. He's going off. And then come regular season, it's like, oof. Because we, we've seen that before a lot as Ravens fans. We hear these training camp hype stories of this player, that player, that player. Oh, they going off. Let's go. Then regular season comes around. It's like, ooh. So we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what goes down uh, on the field. Um, but I, with, with, with the guys that the Ravens do have, he, he mentioned, he said they're not that small. Uh, but we expected them to be Julio Jones or DK or even Odell, uh, who's not even playing. No, I'm, well, they are pretty small. Um what, Devin DuVernay, like 5'10"? What, James Prochet, like, what, he like 5'10", 5'9"? Uh, Tylen Wallace, I feel like he's like 5'10", maybe 5'11", something like that. And Rashad Bateman, what, 6'2"? He like, no, he's 6'1". But the, the receivers, they, they, they ain't no skyscraper receivers or anything like that. Or well, Mark Andrews, but he's a tight end. Uh, but, yeah, our receivers, well, our undrafted guys, they are all tall. All of them, they, they all, well, most of them, they all tall. Um, but that that's one of the reasons that I, I when I was hoping that they would get somebody, um, I was hoping that they would get a, a bigger frame guy. Uh, cause they just got like it seemed like they just got a lot of slot guys. Got a lot of inside guys and whatnot. That's nice to have. Um, but I'm wondering who's gonna be that outside receiver to take that name. Is it gonna be James Prochet? I mean it's looking like right now. Looking like Rashad Bateman the number one receiver, and James Prochet is the number two. Based off everything that we've been hearing from camp. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens uh, with that. Um, but how you compared it to the Louisville teams uh, with unproven guys at receiver. Um, I know for Lamar, yeah, they, they still did put up a lot of points. Um, there a lot of times with Lamar dealt with a lot of drops, though, too. And we just hope that's not the case with these guys. Now, all the receivers, and I mean, they are receivers, but... These receivers that the Ravens have, especially James Prochet and Devin Duvernay, they are known for not dropping the ball. That's what they're known for. That is their specialty, not drop. Because every receiver is supposed to be known for catching the ball. Because you're a receiver. That's your job. But Prochet and Duvernay known especially for not dropping the ball. That's what they were known for in college. And they had like the lowest drop percentage uh, in college. And it was like, oh, okay. Um, so hopefully that continues. That continues. But... It's just going to be important, man. What, what, what I'm hoping, um, all right, Ravens, you're going to use who you got. All right, cool. Put them in positions to have success, please. Greg Roman, John Harbaugh, all the offensive stats. Put them in positions to have success. Play these guys to their strengths. So Because we've seen it a lot of times with Ravens receivers in the past to where – we, 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 we never find out if they were really good or not. We never really maximize uh, who these people are. We never really find out their limitations. Now, a couple of receivers at the Ravens, I feel, I feel like the Ravens maximize. I mean, they could have done better with them too. But Hollywood Brown, I feel like they really pushed him and he got a lot of opportunity. You saw his strengths, you saw his weaknesses. And I feel like, all right, I, I, I was... I was satisfied. I, again, I still feel like they could have done more with him and use him a little bit differently. But I, I, I was satisfied with the Ravens' use of Hollywood Brown 
And I really felt like, all right, we got to know Hollywood Brown as a receiver. Another person who they did it with was um, Torrey Smith. Torrey Smith. I felt like with him as well, we got to know, really know him as a receiver. We got to know his strengths. We got to know his weaknesses. We got to know what he was good at. We got to know what he was bad at. We got to know what he needed to improve on. We, got, we really got to get a great feel for who Torrey Smith was, the best position for him to have success, what that would be. We got to see that. And you know what's funny? Well, and and it, is it a coincidence that whenever you have a conversation with somebody about who the best drafted and developed Ravens wide receivers are, those two names come up. Those two names come up. And I don't think it's a coincidence that those two names come up because the Ravens, like, really, they really use those guys. They really did. So I'm hoping that this year, for whoever's out there on the, they really use those guys. It's, it's so important because this season, again, I, I'm, y'all know I'm a, I'm a, I would would have been a fan of uh, bringing in somebody who was like that, but okay, it time is ticking, clock is ticking, we'll see. But all right, if if it's gonna be these guys, please again maximize them. I know not every single receiver gonna have fifty catches, over a thousand yards, ten touchdowns. No, nah, we don't expect that, but. Try to put them in matchups they can take advantage of, create opportunities for them, uh, play them to their strengths. You saw what these guys did when they were coming out of college. Devin Duvernay, they put him in, put him in some opportunities for some screen passes, some short passes that he could take the distance and whatnot. James Prochet, he low to the ground, but he got hops, and he'll go fight for that ball. Tylen Wallace, big explosive receiver, he got hops. Ooh, ooh boy, that boy got some hops, man. Rashad Bateman, Chris Route Runner, Super Yak guy. Give those guys those opportunities. Put put them where they can have the most success and do the most for your team. Like again, use their strengths. Use their strengths. I I because I really I hate how like Miles Boykin, for instance, that was one right there. They never use them like that. And I always hear so many Ravens fans say, oh, man, he was sorry. He was this. He was that. They didn't maximize Miles Boykin. They didn't. But I know him and Lamar, they were never really on the same page. But Miles Boykin never got maximized. And, and, and now we just, we stuck to left. We left to being stuck with, oh, well, I don't know. I don't, we don't know how Miles Boykin really was. Wasn't many, many opportunities. And that's happened with so many different Ravens receivers that they've drafted. So many. So, again, with the guys now, we're going to see. We're going to see. Hopefully, like Lamar did at, at Louisville, he can have a lot of success with these guys. And hopefully, they can go on to Lamar done won his NFL Heisman. He done got that already, the, the, the MVP. But, hey, now it, it's, it's time for what's next. We, we want him to hold that, that team trophy, that Lombardi trophy, to where him and everybody else, the whole Ravens team, uh, they can say, hey, we did it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Next question came from another patron. Appreciate you, Nazarene. Say, what's good, big bro? Hey, you seen your boy, Mr. All Pro cornerback Trayvon Diggs, getting ate up in man coverage in training camp? I did see it. I, I certainly did. I know we all done seen it by now. Um, and I, oh, I felt so bad for him because not, so many people were getting on him. But he deleted his Twitter. I was like, wow. They, wow. They, oof. Anyway, uh, he said, and it was more than one player doing it to him. He said, funny how the media 
Uh, Ops was dogging Kyle Hamilton, who was a safety getting burnt on one on one, which is expected, especially out of college, but not the all pro capital letters C O R N E R B A C K getting fried in something he's supposed to be good at. But hold up, Engraven, bro. CD Lamb, who runs a 4 5 and a 40, uh, while Trayvon Diggs runs a 4 4. I want to throw this in there too that Rashad Bateman, who casuals think is slow, is also faster than CD Lamb. Uh, message might be too long, my bad, but I love football. So as originally uh, was trolling the media ops, this message ended up being about Bateman. CeeDee Lamb's footwork is ridiculous. His first step and all. Bateman has that first step and the footwork. Cowboys are whack, but... <laughs> Cowboys are whack, uh, but that boy CD is a beast. Him and Rashad Bateman are getting the opportunity to be wide receiver one this year. Yeah, because the Cowboys... Oh, yeah, they traded Amari Cooper. And he was that wide receiver one for them. The Ra the Ravens, they traded Hollywood Brown. And he is that he was that wide receiver one for them. Uh so yeah, you're right. Um he said, I noticed that a lot of Ravens fans like CeeDee Lamb also. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I know him and him and Hollywood, they boys too. But anyway, uh he said, I just want to say that if Bateman is too slow, what is C D then? You don't have to run a four three like Hollywood to be a deep threat. Larry Fitzgerald is not fast, but keep up that work, bro. Had to address the Bateman critics. Ooh, now, um, I was definitely somebody. I ain't never called Bateman slow now. I, I, I haven't heard anybody say that. Um, but I just did not envision him as a deep threat. But I, I know there was somebody who brought. Now, 40 speed and football speed is different. Now. They, they, are, they are very different um, because they don't necessarily mean they don't necessarily go with each other like somebody could have a blazing fast 40 but their football speed could be like oh mm, yeah that ain't really nothing special um but with Rashad Bateman I just never really envisioned him uh as a deep threat uh especially based off of last year do we even see him really get many deep no we ain't really see him get any deep balls like that I, I do remember the the Lamar the flea flicker in a Vikings game um, but the, the, the Vikings, they played that really good. So they took that away. Um, but I can't really remember him getting really many deep shots like that. Um, and maybe that could be why I don't envision him as a deep threat. Like with Hollywood deep threat. Oh yeah. That that's the main thing they threw to him was the deep, the deep shots. Um, but with Rashad Bateman, yeah, he does have good speed. Um, so now with him being that, that wide receiver one, um, he's going to have more opportunity to show it. And, and we all looking forward to it. The last question on this episode also came from another patron, my guy, Gareth. He said, hey, Engraven, I really hope you and your family are having a great summer. And Pookie, I just wanted to know what you would think about trading for Josh Jacobs. Nah, I I feel like that would be, um, if he got cut and they picked him up, and Gus Edwards is still being injured. All right, cool. Even though they got Mike Davis, but I, I wouldn't be mad at that. But a trade for him, I just, I don't think, it would be really worth it. I mean, well, yeah, um, uh, let's say they gave up some cheap and like, you, uh, anyway, let me keep going. He said, uh, as you say, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. His cap hit is 2.1 mil. That's not bad. As always, uh, never miss a video. Thanks, bro. Keep being great. Hashtag team, keep it clean. We are not great at all. Uh, you are, but me, no. Uh, he said, P.S., I think Las Vegas is shopping him as he played a big amount of time in the Hall of Fame game. Yes, yes, I agree. Because you don't just, like, and he was, the, like, one of the only starters playing. You don't play no starter in no Hall of Fame game that much if you're not shopping him. That was to let teams know, like, hey, you see him? You see him? They declined his fifth-year option, too, and they played him in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, they, 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 that boy is on the market. Um, but for Ravens, no, I, no, I would much rather them like invest that, whether it be those draft picks, um, salary cap, I would rather them invest that into other positions on the offense. Cause I think at running back, they'll be straight like JK Dobbins. He should be back any day now. Gus is going to be a long time, but they still got Mike Davis. They got Tyler Beatty. They got Justice Hill. They got Corey Clement. Now, Josh Jacobs, he's nice now. He's a big back. Um, nice little goal line back, too. Short yardage back. He could play. Um, but I would just rather, if they're going to trade for something, I would rather them invest it into another position. Like, yeah, this feels 
like a dream And you know just what I mean You see my boy, he like gotta made it how to made it Boy he's a fan and he like the Ravens like the Ravens And you know just what I mean You too team keep it clean You see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it Boy that's my homie ain't that right and graven right and graven Shout out to Graven.